as uh, a video jockey from a popular youth entertainment channel. But uh, hey, today we are here to have a little bit more fun. Welcome to Chai Time in Quarantine. And today I'm joined by a lovely lady. I've been told she's a chiller. And of course, she needs no much of an introduction. She's a writer, director, and producer. Of course, she recently directed the movie Guilty, the Netflix movie Guilty. And of course, she's also the winner of a Filmfare Award for her debut movie, Hazaro Pai Se Aisi. Everybody make some noise for Ruchi. What's up, Ruchi? How are you doing? Hi, Clint. How are you? Did you like my introduction for you? I loved it. And what I'm enjoying more is that we have the same hairstyle. Hey, true that. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I, I, you know, that's what people always tell me you, the only reason that I have not cut my hair in since college, since my college days is only because, you know, I just get identified by my hairstyle and people kind of really do love it as well. I, I have to say this one more thing uh, that we have in common, uh, according to me, is that beautiful smile that we have, isn't it? Have you been, have you been appreciated for your smile before? Yes, except my therapist told me not to smile so much. Why? What sort <laughs> of therapist says that? No, it's, you know, when, when you're trying to be like this uh, badass person, you're not badass supposed to put other, other people at ease. <laughs> obviously, I don't take seriously. <laughs> Perfect, Ruchi. Uh, well, humanity is facing one of the biggest challenges ever. But uh, here we are. Uh, Pentagon Events and Activations has curated this amazing opportunity for all of us yes. to kind of engage with each other, use this as an opportunity to not just entertain, but also get inspired. Uh, well, honestly, it's an honor to talk to you. I'm going to dive into some quick questions with you as we know that uh, we have a bunch of people who are online and we're going to take their questions as well for everybody who's watching us just to let you know we're going to take your questions live but before that we have some of the readers who have sent us a bunch of questions way before in hand and uh, Ruchi here we go well you're a writer director and a producer what role is more difficult being a writer, being a director, or being a producer? <laughs> well, I think it all depends on personality type. Writing is hard in that it's the loneliest part of filmmaking. Yeah. Um, directing for me is the best. Um, yep. It's fun. You get to collaborate with people who you think are really good at what they do. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, with each aspect of filmmaking you get to mold the film and the story and you know say something larger um producing to me is the least fun but again <laughs> it depends on your personality because yeah. it's where you get people together it's not only about the money it's where mm -hmm. you put stuff together yeah. um, and if you're that type of person who enjoys that part of it the selling then yeah. it's a great thing. I mean, I am a producer primarily because uh, in India, creators don't really get royalties or ownership of their work. Mm -hmm. So that's why you see most uh, writer directors end up becoming producers so that we okay. have some ownership of what we've created. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. So you said you like the direction part of it. That's more fun. There's more collaboration yeah. happening. Writing yeah. is the is the lonely or let's say uh, a solitude you can't write in have you ever tried i mean have you been in scenarios where you're uh, with people around and you you've been able to write or maybe that's the opportunity where you get inspired to get your story but you have to go back to your room and then uh, write it down on your writing table how, how does well, that work i mean we uh, of course i i mean earlier i used to write in a more solitary way now i try and make sure that I work with other writers as well. And of mm -hmm. course, the current scenario of OTT platforms, we have writers rooms now so that, you know, yeah. they're usually three or four writers together on a project. So that yeah. is automatically better. I feel, um, I mean, I do think that filmmaking works better when it's 
the sum total of everyone's best mm -hmm. is definitely going to be the better than just the best of what you can do. Okay. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, nowadays writing is more fun if you get to jam with other, you know, intelligent, talented people. True that. What do you have to say about the whole? Uh, whole army of young writers out there well they might not know how the ecosystem of taking their projects to going to a, a producer or a director what do you what do you do if you're a writer for everybody for every budding writer out there who has great stories to share uh, how do they go about it so there's never been a better time than now for writers and that's literally because of all the ott platforms whether it's Netflix, Amazon, Hotstar, or there's so many others. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So everyone is looking for writers and material. So there's mm -hmm. so much thirst for content before. Uh, okay. So the best way is just to sit down and write, get your pitch mm -hmm. together. If you have a pilot, if you have a first draft, it's always better. People will take you more seriously. Uh, okay. And also be able to judge your work, and things will just move faster. And then okay. you just uh, email or write to whoever, whether you want to work with a director or a production house, just write to them. Uh, and things will happen way far. Of course, get it registered first. Yeah, um, I was just, yeah. I just want to come to that because there's yeah, so much yeah. of copy paste work that yeah. happens around in, in the yeah. industry. Yeah. So how do you protect, how do you get it registered? It's very easy. Uh, Screenwriters Association, that's mm -hmm. SWA, is online. Google it, go on it, enroll on it. Everything is online. Upload your thing, get it registered. It's a rupee per page, mm -hmm. but it will save you a lot of heartache later. So you said it's screenwriters.org? Yeah, I think it's ORG. Okay. But Fair enough. You can Google it. Screenwriters Association. Just Google it, guys. All you budding writers out there, uh, now you know how you take your story to uh, to the next stage. Make sure that you get it registered. I'm going to dive into your first project, Hazaro Kwaishe Essi. How did that come up? How did the Ruchi, who was an amazing, brilliant writer, convert that into a movie? So basically, I was an assistant director. And what I really wanted to do at that time was write. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had worked with Sudhir Mishra before. Okay. And oh, wow. he had this idea for a film which he wanted to do set in the 70s. And I was a history student, so I was really interested on in this project. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, luckily for me, he felt totally at sea with this uh, woman character, which is a big part of Hazaro, Gita. So okay. initially he was like, yeah, yeah, uh, because you're a woman, you'll understand how to write women. Uh, so that's how I got an opportunity to get onto this project. And mm -hmm. of course, then once I was on it, I was in it. <laughs> and <laughs> in fact, uh, we wrote the script over, I have to tell you, six years. Six years? Yes. Oh my because God. At that time, a film like that, I mean, a film like that, even in today's time, would be a tough call. But mm -hmm. in those days, this was the late 90s. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, there was no way anyone in the Indian film industry was going to uh, back this kind of film, nor was there any thought that there was an audience in this country for the film. Yeah. So we actually wrote it thinking of an international audience. Okay. And I think that's why we were able to be so tr true to the characters, the language, and all those things. Mm -hmm. um, because we, we knew there was never going to be an Indian theatrical release. Mm -hmm. um, so there was none of that pressure and because it was, you know, this small film, which basically means there's no money. Uh, <laughs> uh, or the artsy yeah. film, yeah, yeah. is that how it, 
how it so used to be typecast that, that means time. there's no money huh? <laughs> that's the long and short of it so then you have to do other jobs for money so yeah. you can't work on it full time and that's yeah. why it took so long and also it took so long to get people to back the film and eventually uh, the french government and pritish nandi uh, put in the money and that's how the film was made by the time the film was being made i had already started directing so i i mean i was so like you know protective about this film that i actually <laughs> told sudhir i said i think i'll be the associate director or something and he said but don't you want to make you know your own debut film now mm. i said, yeah i do but i just uh, i i can't trust anyone <laughs> With the script, I have to be there like, <laughs> to make it's like baby, baby, right? <laughs> Probably. I mean, I was a very cheeky young girl. Now, of course, I'm not. <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> What's with women and? Uh, but I think you know, I, I I really believe, right? We keep evolving with uh, with every moment, for that matter, right? What we were yesterday is not necessarily how we are today, uh, and tomorrow again, right? So, do you feel there has been in the whole evolution of from the younger uh, Ruchi to the mature Ruchi? Do you what, what do you feel has been the difference within within maybe the kind of work that you do, right? Maybe writing stories, directing, producing. Do you feel there has been a dynamic evolution, and what has that specifically been? I feel work-wise, in terms of output mm -hmm. and my voice, what I'm trying to say, all that. is basically uh not the same but there's no very big difference mm -hmm. what has changed a lot i feel is the way i uh behave and interact with people within the business okay when when i was young i was extremely brash and probably a little bratty also uh -huh. i mean you know the kind of director like that like you know I I don't trust you to make this film without me. Like who says that? You know? Somebody like a Sudhir Mishra, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> How so did he I take that? How did he take that? What was his reaction when he told him that? Luckily for me, he uh, you know there's a thing about Sudhir. If you uh, look at who has assisted him, every most people who assisted Sudhir have become writer, director, and producers. so he is someone who's very generous in sharing uh the workload you know mm -hmm. so that way you get to do stuff which you would never get to do with any other director like he gives you a lot of freedom and uh, i think it's very smart on his part because it's like if someone is giving you something which is good you mm -hmm. should take it If you don't like it, you can say no. So yeah. you know, I I feel uh, I I really benefited by assisting a person like Sudhir because it it gave me a lot of hands-on experience. Special uh, shout out to Sudhir Mishra. Well, Ruchi has a lot of good things to say about you. Sorry, you were saying something. Did I cut you into it? Yeah, no, no, no. Then I was saying now, of course, having worked in the business for so long. Uh -huh. one has learned to control a little bit of one's attitude and you know you temper a little bit what you say to people and uh, you know you have to i mean you are supposed to but it doesn't always happen you know watch yourself how you say things mm -hmm. you know instead of being totally direct so mm -hmm. one is learning how to do those things i'm not very good at it because it requires a lot of practice effort, effort, effort. and yeah it's i just feel it's always easier to be honest <laughs> and, <laughs> and sometimes then, on, yeah sometimes honesty isn't the best policy is it yeah 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 it gets me into a lot of trouble actually All right, I'm just I'm just going, not going to keep sticking to the whole uh, uh, age question, but I just want to because this is something that I personally feel. I feel, let's say, when I was in my college days, I was a, I was way much more enthusiastic about yeah. uh, about things that I did. Right, I would I would give a little more than what I I give it today. 
maybe I think with age you just get a little more complacent or you just get a little more comfortable in in certain zones and you don't want to go out of it. Do you feel there is something on those lines? Has that kind of affected uh, your story writing or any or just your personal life, personal or professional life in general? No, it's because I'm a stickler. I just go on and on, and sometimes everyone else is like, "Now just stop." And even I'm like, Ruchi, just stop. But I just can't. <laughs> you know, like I really get into it. The thing that has changed is that now one is much busier. So mm -hmm. technically, you don't have as much time to devote uh, as you used to have when you were jobless. Because now, luckily, yeah. one is not jobless. Uh -huh. Ah, uh, true that. You know, we've, we've been getting a lot of questions. I'm going to quickly get into uh, questions about Guilty. A lot of people want to know about Guilty specifically. Uh, well, uh, many claim that Guilty is a true story. Are these rumors true? Mm -hmm. Well, I would like, uh, what I would say is that there's nothing in Guilty which is untrue. Mm -hmm. Everything All right, somebody's left to be... Uh, uh, <laughs> more politically correct, is it? Is that all oh, right? Yeah. I see the halo. I see the halo around that. No, no. So actually, there's nothing in the film which I don't know anybody can refute because all those things happen mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, when you say true story, uh, people assume the entire story is as it happened to someone. Yeah. Or, yeah or to me or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's not the case. Mm -hmm. But everything that is in the film is plucked, plucked out from either my experience or people close to me, their experiences. Frankly, I think the reason people, are, especially women, are relating so much to it is because most of the things that happen in the film have happened to them at some point in their life as dire as it sounds. I mean, most women don't even have the luxury of having a fight with their boyfriend at night and being able to get out of the car and walk off because it's not safe. Someone is going to come up and misbehave. So you have to get back in the car. I mean, it's just that simple. So I, I'm not even talking about the big aspects of the story i'm saying every little thing like there's that scene in the subway which a lot of people talk about I mean, just that <laughs> that scene that scene wasn't actually in the script but uh it was slightly different like she was gonna walk on in the underpass and a guy was gonna pass by and just say something slimy to her but mm -hmm. when i was shooting it i decided to change the scene and I put in something because I was a hostelite. And uh, when I lived on the in the hostel on Marine Drive, and I used to go across the Cherney Road Bridge every single day to catch a bus yeah. to go to college, mm -hmm. every morning at 8.30, there was a guy on that bridge in the open. Time <laughs> <everyone>. <laughs> I'm just yeah. like, like he's there and it's a crowded bridge. He knows girls pass it in the morning every day. So he's, you know, doing this, like, yeah. come on. So these are all personal experiences, unfortunately. You know, I think we blame it on the on the masalas. Yeah, we eat so much of heaty. <laughs> no, keeping the jokes aside, right? No, we just have a couple of minutes before we're going to get into the next session. Uh, I'm going to quickly ask you, how are you coping up with this 21 day lockdown? How uh, have you been quarantining yourself? I am uh, actually one of the very lucky people. I mean, you feel bad almost to, to say that, you know, you are, I'm fortunate enough to be away from Bombay. I'm in a place called Karjat. I'm in the middle of a forest and uh, I'm with my sister her kids and with my daughter so my last year has been so busy and the only thing i've been wanting is to spend more time with my daughter mm -hmm. and lo and behold so I've basically you are vacationing out there while we are all locked down 
I mean, we are locked down too, but it's just that we are lucky enough not to be in our apartments in Bombay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's good. Uh, have you been taking up a lot of people turning chefs? Uh, you know, also a lot of house uh, housekeeping work being done by you know celebrities are putting it up from from yeah. Amitabh Bachchan to uh, Ranveer Singh to everybody. They are either yeah. cooking up things or they are working out in the gym or uh, so on and so forth. So what have you been doing that additional? What is that one additional thing that you've been taking up, or one of those many things that you've been doing in these uh, challenging Home days? Homeschooling. 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 So we right. are. So I'm. A, I'm teaching my daughter and my nephew, and mm -hmm. my sister takes the other children, and her husband takes one of the others, and then we do PE, and you know, so it's like letters, numbers, and it's. You know the people who are most undervalued in this world are teachers. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree with you on that. Well, that's fantastic. So, writer, director, producer turned teacher now. Thank you, Ruchi. <laughs> was really nice chatting up with you. I wish we could chat up more, but we have a time constraint because up next we have an amazing session curated by R. J. Rogani with veteran journalist, columnist, and best-selling author Balchi Karkaria. Uh, that's going to be super fun as well. I'm going to stay tuned in. Ruchi, thank you very much for the thank words so of much. excellence. For all. Thanks for those words. I'm sure a lot of budding writers out there, they got a lot of information and juice to uh, how work things out. And now that we have all a lot of time to uh, sit down and creatively work out on whatever we want to, uh, I'm sure all these words will definitely come handy. With, on that note, once again, thank you very much. Ruchi and big shout out to Pentagon Events and Activations for curating this amazing chai time in quarantine. Thank and you, Pentagon. Friends. Thank you, Kushbu, and thank you so much, Chris. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Bye -bye. We're gonna we're gonna tune out.